If you'd like your drone data to be part of a global initiative to map ecosystems around the world, or you'd like to manage your own data and have author mosaics created for you, I'm going to show you how you can upload your data to GeoNADIA in just a few short clicks. Let's get started. From the GeoNADIA homepage, click on Upload Data. If you haven't already signed in or created an account, you'll need to do that first. I've signed in, so I'm ready to go. A couple of different ways that I can upload. I can use the button up here. I can browse for folders or upload folders. The easiest way that I find though is just to drag and drop. In this case, I'm going to show how we can drag and drop multiple folders at once. So for example, these were three consecutive flights. I just changed the battery out in between each flight and I am going to drag and drop all of them into this little space here. Now it recognizes that they're in three folders and I get the choice. Do I want to keep them as three separate data sets or do I want to merge them as a single data set? So it's a really good idea to merge them if they are consecutive in time and space. So all you've done is change a battery in the mission. There's no geographic gap and it's not separated by days or anything like that. Otherwise you wanna keep them as separate. For me, just a quick battery change. So I'm going to merge those subfolders together. So you'll see it's already taken the name of one of the folders as the name of my data set. I can change that if I like just by clicking on the edit button and changing that name. For the moment, I'm just going to keep that the same. The next thing it asks me is if I would like to keep my data private or I'm happy for it to be public. So this is part of our subscription feature. So if you have subscribed to one of our memberships, you'll be able to set your data sets to private if you would like to do so. The next thing is to add a description. So usually you're looking at adding any information about the way you've captured the data, who was involved, and anything about the project, so perhaps linking to a scientific paper, anything that you like there in that way. It will automatically populate who captured the data set based on who uploaded it. That's not always right. So if you do need to change that, you can add in the additional information that you need there. The same for the institution. So if the institution information isn't correct there, that's based on who uploaded the data, you can just add any additional information you need. If there's anyone that you would like to thank in terms of being able to capture this data, you can put that in the acknowledgement sections there. So perhaps that's people who helped you capture the data or any funding body that has assisted with financing your work. And you can also add any tags that you like. So I might add in coral reef, for example, perhaps some seagrass as well. Just hit enter between each one. If you need to review your photos, you can click on that there and you'll see the full listing there or you can see the thumbnail. So this is really handy if you need to delete any photos at any stage. So for example, if this was a photo on the ground, it sometimes happens when, we, when we're getting ready to take off, make sure you remove that first. So simply just click on the ones that you don't want and you're going to hit delete selected. At this point, you can also add any photos if you need. I don't actually need to delete that, so I'll just leave that and go back to my upload there. When you're happy with all the information, you can go directly to click upload and it's going to start the process. At that time while you're uploading, you can also continue to edit any of these details. So here's one I prepared earlier. You can see the information that I added into the metadata when I was uploading, the name of the data set, who captured it and what institution they work for. Here's all the description acknowledgements and tags I put in and the original images that I uploaded. When you upload your data, the author mosaic won't be available immediately. It can take anywhere from up to an hour to maybe 24 hours, depending on the complexity of the data set. So just be patient with that and then check back and your author mosaic will be available. Up the top, you can see information that the platform creates. So information around the area that the author mosaic covers and the ground sampling distance or pixel size of your data set. So 2.48 centimeters for this one. You can see the date and time of the first photo that was uploaded. And you can also access the tile mapping service link if you have a subscription. This will allow you to push your author mosaic directly into your favorite GIS application. If you'd like to share this data set with your friends, family, colleagues, social media, as you like, you can pop over here to share the data set. And if you would like to download the original images or author mosaic, you can download here. I look forward to seeing the data sets that you upload in the areas where you're drone mapping.